Well, SpaceX is preparing to fire up its Falcon 9 rocket for a Halloween launch. The Crew 3 mission is scheduled to lift off early tomorrow morning. Joining me now live is astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU, Brad Tucker. Brad, good afternoon. It's interesting yeah. timing. They're launching this particular maiden flight during the spooky season. That's right, you know, and they're launching, I think, at 2.30 a.m. local time. Uh, so night launches are rare. Uh, Halloween night launches are even more unique. Um, so definitely a fitting thing. I guess they're all dressing up as astronauts for Halloween. I don't know. Um, but, you know, the, this third launch is quite important. Uh, you know, NASA, when it invested, I think, about $2.7 billion to SpaceX to develop Crew Dragon to ferry their astronauts, that was because they were defunding the space shuttle program, which cost them one and a half billion dollars every single launch. So the fact that they're now getting their third mission, it's now kind of their third one free. The first two recouped the money they invested, and now this is essentially savings in the bank from that initial investment. So a really actual remarkable milestone launch in addition to a very nice date. Yes, absolutely. A great timing, great date, and hopefully it all goes successfully. But, you know, I was reading that the crew will only have a couple of days, three or days, to learn the ins and outs of the station operations. Is it difficult to learn this much in a short amount of time? You know, they have been training for a bit, but, yeah, there's a lot of practical handover, uh, as you said, in those few days, which is always why they overlap these missions, because the next one will rotate down later next week. But, yeah, there is a bit of a rush. You want to make sure that, uh, you know, all the ins and outs, there's no particular things you haven't forgotten and all the training's up to speed. So there is actually a lot of work as they're getting settled into the space station. So it's always a plus. Uh, the other thing is there also will be a German astronaut on this. There's three Americans plus a German. Uh, so it's really showing how many can now start rotating as part of this greater increase in duration uh, of these launches of space station. So it should be exciting, but obviously a busy uh, week ahead for the new astronauts launching uh, Sunday afternoon. Yes, a busy week ahead, and hopefully it all goes to plan, Brad. Now, the first potential exoplanet, a planet that orbits around another star, has been found in another galaxy. Take us through it. Yeah, quite remarkable. We've talked quite a bit about the planets found in our Milky Way, and, and there's thousands of them. But one of the big questions is always, is our Milky Way quite unique? Is it for some reason we only have planets, or are they just as common in other galaxies? Because when we want to know how many planets there are and therefore those possibilities of Earth-like planets and life, that really depends on the number. So this discovery that was announced earlier this week of a planet uh, about twice the size of Saturn orbiting an old star was really exciting because not only does it believe that we can use these techniques to find planets in other galaxies, but indeed they do exist. So it's really exciting discovery all around and just that number of how many things are out there now has just become that, well, astronomically large now. Yes, it certainly seems that way. Uh, let's move on because NASA is aiming for a first launch of Artemis, of course, this huge and very important mission to return to the moon in mid-February. We know, Brad, it's been plagued by a number of delays, but hopefully they're ready now. Yeah, we were just talking about last week how they started to put that assembly together, and since that all has worked, as you said, uh, something that they've been waiting, they were hoping to do last year, uh, they were hoping that sometime would happen this year, as you said, is quite delayed. Now looks like a February, they're currently scheduling for about February 13th as a launch date. Now, that date may slip naturally just because of weather and a few other logistics things, but the fact that they're able to pinpoint a date usually means that they're rapidly close to it. And as you see, the Orion capsule get fitting into place. Uh, this is a big deal. You know, the NASA has been saying, yeah, we're going back to the moon. It's been a project well, over a decade in the making. And the fact that there kind of is this tangible date now is quite exciting. And hopefully they can stick to that rough plan. Fingers crossed. It is such a, a critical mission, as you said. Yep. Uh, what more needs to happen then between now and then to be ready to launch? So there's a few different tests they still have to do with everything put together. They do a few static firings or testing just to make sure everything's kind of flowing. It's kind of like you turn on the engine and let it run a few minutes, potentially if it, you know, the car's cold before you head off. So they do a few of those sorts of things to make sure everything's performing as they plan. Uh, and then they obviously will take off. I think part of the thing is we have also the December, Christmas time, which is always a bit busy, and NASA has another big launch that we've talked about, the James Webb Space Telescope happening 
at the end of December. So a little bit of pacing. Um, and then there's also weather that they have to account for. It's coming into the winter of Florida. Then that generally isn't too bad of a time, but they, again, they have to work around that. So there's just a few of these little things that have to happen uh, in addition to the fueling and preparation for the rocket. Um, but none of which would seems major because these biggest hurdles of making sure everything is sealed and working together seem to have passed. And uh, hopefully February, we see the first mission heading back to the moon. Yeah, how exciting. A huge uh, mm. couple of months coming up uh, in the space world, that's for sure. And just finally, Br Brad, Blue Origin has announced plans to build its own space station by the end of the decade. Yeah, look, we we've seen how quickly this private space travel world has happened. And now it's not surprising that there's talk of, well, what more can we do in space? And what more has a few different issues. It's obviously, hey, it'd be great to have tourists that go up, but clearly there will be that demand. But there's also, as we've talked quite a bit about, the aging current International Space Station. It's becoming older. There's problems. Uh, it's only under contract till 2024. Now, NASA said, hey, you know, we'll keep it going till 2028. But Russia hasn't agreed. And even past then, it probably won't have a lifetime. So what is going to happen around what we call low Earth orbit in the future remains to be seen. And this could fill that void. Blue Origin working with Boeing, who's also developing their own capsule to take astronauts into space, teaming up to say, well, we can manage this, we can operate it. And that allows them to dictate the rules. So private tourists or customers, but even government contractors could come up. So NASA astronauts could still fly and do experiments or even Australian astronauts in the future. So it gets a little bit more flexibility as we spin in the space travel world. And look, end of the decade seems quite long, but it, as we see, time moves fast and it's a deadline they could actually reach. So as you said, lots of exciting things still happening. Absolutely. Just such a huge business now, isn't mm -hmm. it, really? This, this uh, space travel. So yes, lots yeah. to come in the next decade. Brad Tucker, great to chat. Thank you for joining me. Thanks. Take care.